If, if it's a tsunami, you might want to know uh, what route to take to evacuate, how high do you have to go to avoid it. So it's all the same kind of simulations. Now, it might seem like the stuff of science fiction, but the impact that asteroids hitting the Earth can have is very real. I'm now joined by Professor Marsha Berger, who is working on modelling asteroid-generated tsunamis. Marsha, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us how likely an event is one of these tsunamis. Certainly, earthquake-generated tsunamis are much more common. There's also landslide-generated tsunamis. We've had some of those recently and weather-related tsunamis. As far as we know, we have not had, except for the big dinosaur-killing tsunamis, we have not had asteroid-generated tsunamis that we've been able to measure. We've been looking at this very recently, and there's really no observable data yet. How are you actually doing the studying then? Well, first we derive the equations, what changes uh, if you have a an asteroid that, uh, for example, bursts in the sky, it generates a pressure wave. So a blast wave is what would be driving the tsunami. So that's an additional term in the modeling. But after that, it's the same software. The tsunami propagates, it approaches shore. When it gets close to shore, the, uh, it becomes more shallow. Right, the, the depth of the ocean is, is much less as we approach shore. And that leads to a study of inundation. If it did reach shore, how far in would it propagate? So those are all things that we've had to do for earthquake-generated tsunamis. We use the same tools and uh, apply that in the case of asteroid-generated tsunamis. You said that hopefully they're not that likely, we don't think. But as you said, the asteroid is probably more dangerous than the tsunami itself if we're there. But how important is the work that you're doing nonetheless for coastal communities? Well, in general, the work we're doing is very important, but not just because of tsunamis. It's the same code, the same software that models tsunami propagation is also used for, for example, hurricane simulations, storm surge. So we can simulate that with the same tools that say how far inland will it go, how far will it propagate. If, if it's a tsunami, you might want to know uh, what route to take to evacuate, how high do you have to go to avoid it. So it's all the same kind of simulations. That's what we do, and uh, I've now turned that software to the case of asteroid-generated tsunamis as well. In the case of airbursts, we haven't looked at the larger asteroids that will actually impact the water yet. So that'll be the next set of problems we'll look at. Well, maybe we'll talk about that in Tokyo, maybe. Okay, good one. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Marsha. Okay, thank well, you. thank you.